This is Sean Ryu and I'm back with another video. On this video what I want to do is just kind of talk about different type of food options when backpacking for hot meals uh, as well as talk about freezer bag cooking, how to rehydrate meals and, and those type of things. I know a lot of people that I'm friends with and, and people I hang out with sometimes some of the questions that come up when they know that I'm a backpacker and know that I like to go backpacking is you know what do you carry for food uh, not to mention the fact that how do you cook your food and so I know I also talk to a lot of people in different forums and stuff like that and a lot of them have questions about freezer bag cooking and hydrating meals and things like that so I just want to kind of spend some time talking about different options uh, obviously you know I've got a couple examples right here of different types of things that you can use for dehydrated meals uh, this isn't the end all be all there's a lot of different other options that are available uh, this is just what I had to represent right now so I just want to kind of spend some time talking about these things so the first couple of things I want to talk about is for me I've realized that as an ultralight backpacker uh, the easiest way to reduce weight is by going with dehydrated meals uh, reason why is because of the fact that it's just going to be lighter so one of the first things that I started doing when I first started backpacking was I would get a plastic container like this and I'll break out a scale just to kind of give you an idea of weight on this and this is a Ziploc microwave safe uh, 2 cup 16 ounce 473 milliliter uh, plastic container comes in at 1.3 ounces and what I would do is I would take whatever it was that I was going to eat um, that needed to be hydrated and I would go ahead and put it in here and then I would fill it up with some water that way throughout the day as I'm backpacking it's actually being hydrated so I'm not having to, I wasn't having to use a lot of fuel to actually go back and hydrate my meal the thing that I liked about this was is that you know you could use a little bit of water uh, and carry it the rest of the way uh, not to mention the fact that like I said you just didn't have to use a lot of um, fuel in order to heat it up basically all I would do is the, the meal would be hydrated when I would get to camp I would just take some hot water uh, just a very little bit just enough to, to warm up whatever it was that was inside of it uh, pour that in and then you know I could eat directly out of here uh, when I was done you know just clean this out and use it the next day so that was just one of the options that I did then later I started getting into uh, freezer bag cooking uh, nobody had really explained a lot I just assumed that you were taking your dehydrated meals putting it in a freezer bag and then putting hot water in it and I started realizing very quickly uh, that that doesn't work very well and the reason why is you can break down your whatever it is that you're eating if it's for instance like a, a Connor rice side and put it in here but when you go to put your hot water in here uh, this thing is very hot and trying to eat out of it is a pain so you know it was it didn't take me long to figure out what I need to do was Go ahead and put my food in here uh, when it was hot and then go ahead and take something like this which is my cook pot or one of my cook pots and then after I was done this or after I poured it in here I would just go ahead and stick my freezer bag in here put the top on so it could rehydrate and then when I was ready to eat it just take the freezer bag open it up like this take the handles out and then I could eat directly out of here so that was just one of my things that I had kind of figured out that I could do uh, but I started realizing that even in doing that my food wasn't hydrating all the way and so I realized that I, there I was probably doing something wrong and so I kind of did some more research on it and I found out that one of the things that you want to do is using or use a pot cozy so I'm going to kind of show you some options as far as different types of pot cozies. Uh, there's lighter options out there, um, but these are just the ones that I have. So let me kind of go into the specifics behind them. Uh, this is one that I got from Anti-Gravity Gear. Uh, this is the pot cozy. Uh, this is the top for the pot cozy. Basically what you're going to do, you can do it one of two ways. Uh, you can put your food in here, put it in here, then put your top on it and use that as a way of hydrating your meal another option is is that you know if you're cooking in your cook pot like this you can go ahead and just stick your cook pot in here 
stick the top on it and let it hydrate that way. Um, to me, I liked it. I used it for a little while. The only thing I didn't like is that I use small volume packs. So by the time that you add this cozy on here, you've really kind of increased the, vo or the size of this. Uh, and this is just one of the, the titanium mugs that I use. So I just decided that even though it worked and I liked it, um, there was probably something better that I could do. So I did some research and I found out that Gossamer Gear actually sells these um, hydration packages. Actually, you know what? This is not from Gossamer Gear. It's from Anti-Gravity Gear. Uh, it works the same way as the Cozy does. Uh, all you do is you put your food in your Ziploc bag. You stick it in here. Like so. Pull the top down and let it sit till it hydrates. Uh, the reason why I actually decided that I like this, it, if I remember correctly, it does weigh about the same as the Pot Cozy, uh, was for the fact that when I stick it in my pack, it's gonna take up less volume because it's flat. I don't know if it's picking up on camera. So to me, it just worked better for me. Uh, not to mention, that I know it probably sounds stupid, but you know, I could take this out, spread it out like that, and you know, I've got a small little sit pad that I could sit on if I wanted to. So those are just some options and different ways of hydrating your food. Just kind of talk about different types of food. Most uh, dehydrated food takes about a cup and a half to two cups max to, to boil your water. So, or to hydrate them with boiled water. So for me, I've actually started realizing that a 550 milliliter cook pot is more than enough for freezer bag cooking because basically, you know, this is, uh, the one that I currently use now, but a 550 milliliter cook pot is going to give you just over two cups of water, uh, which is going to be more than enough for that. So you can reduce volume in your pack with your cook pot, uh, but you still have enough to boil the, the water that you need in order to hydrate these type of meals. Uh, I've got a couple of different representations of different types of food. So, you know, here's a perfect example. And Obviously, when I or when I go backpacking, I break all these things down into Ziploc bags uh, because these are bulkier packaging. Uh, not to mention the fact that some of these types of foods, uh, I don't want to carry the whole thing. I just want to carry parts of it. So, you know, this is one of the things that I actually uh, love is that Harmony House makes dehydrated vegetables. Uh, one of the things that I've always had a hard time with is, you know, when I go backpacking, I love vegetables and you know you can't get stuff there's not a lot of stuff like tomatoes and stuff like that that i really like where it actually tastes like a tomato uh, so i actually went and bought one of their sampler packages uh, i want to say there's like 36 different types of vegetables that are in their sampler package uh, and it's somewhere around maybe like 45 dollars and they're all dehydrated types of vegetables so it gives you a big variety uh, the other thing that's really cool about it is is that uh, the, this package right here, if I were to take this backpacking with me, this would be enough for maybe like to put into three or four meals. Uh, it's another good way of also just adding it to stuff that may be a little bland. Uh, or, you know, after a while you kind of get tired of eating the same thing. So it just adds a little more variety and flavor. Uh, it, you start figuring out different ways of just making, being creative with food and just adding more flavor. So that's one of the things. Uh, this one is actually the diced potatoes. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of the different other types of vegetable options as well. If you're a backpacker and you do a lot of long distance backpacking, this is probably very familiar to you. The Connor uh, rice sides as well as the pasta sides. You can only pick these up at a lot of places for like a dollar, dollar twenty-five at max. Uh, same thing, it's a dehydrated meal. You can do it uh, using freezer bag cooking. Uh, some people actually stick it in their pot, uh, put the water and cook it. Uh, I've never been a big fan of that because that just means it's more I've got to clean up. Not to mention, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but at the very bottom of my pot, there's a burn down here uh, from where I was actually cooking some pasta sides. It burned to the bottom of it because if, you don't, if you're not able to regulate your sto the stove that you have, uh, you're just going to run into problems with it getting too hot too quick and it burning not to mention this is, doesn't have a non-stick coating on it uh, so that's the kind of problem that sometimes you run into this is another one that is actually really kind of cool it's an easy side and the packaging on this one isn't too heavy uh, you can actually 
if you look on the back of it, you actually uh, fill it up to this line. I want to say it's about a cup of water, maybe a cup and a half max. Uh, but you can actually eat out of this bag. It's made out of like a plastic material. So, you know, it's just another option where you could either repackage it or you could just rip the top off, put your water in here and eat directly out of here. Uh, which also helps with cleanup. And, you know, this one says microwave cooks in four minutes. I've realized that when I hydrate this that I normally need to leave water in there in the, for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, just another option. And then obviously, you know, there's all kinds of different types of soup options. Uh, this just happens to be the one that I'm using to represent uh, everything from instant chicken noodle soup uh, to miso soup, is which is one of my favorites, which is a, a Japanese type of instant soup. Uh, that one actually rehydrates very quickly because basically it's a broth with a couple, you know, very small amount of dehydrated vegetables uh, as well as um, tofu in it. Uh, it basically hydrates as quickly as hot cocoa or anything like that. But you know, here's just another option. Uh, soups are definitely good things to do uh, when you're doing freezer bag cooking or just dehydrated meals. And then, you know, here's another thing. Uh, I've actually transitioned to using a lot more of these. I know they're expensive, uh, but the reason why is because it's all inclusive. You know, you got your food in here, uh, you've got your freezer bag and you can actually just put your food in here, close it up, and hydrate it from here. And that's kind of helped me to eliminate having to carry this um, or even having to carry you know, this pot cozy with me. Uh, what I normally do is when I pack this in my food bag is I'll, I'll put, or put a hole in here and just kind of crush it up. Uh, that way I can make it more compact. But that way I'm just not having to carry anything extra. And for me, it's worked a lot better lately. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, this is a lasagna with meat sauce. And this is actually good enough for um, enough to feed two and a half people. But I've realized that with my appetite, this is actually really good enough for one person. Um, so when you look at it, this is uh, 240 calories. You're looking at roughly um, about 650, maybe 700 calories, depending on the different type of pasta side that you get, or I'm sorry, different type of mountain house which to me still isn't enough. I, I eat a lot. Um, this is normally just, you know, I'll eat this and then I'll normally have like some kind of dessert with me, uh, some kind of dehydrated fruit as well as some kind of uh, soup to, to eat along with all this stuff. And so anyway, you know, these are just some different representations of different types of dehydrated food. Uh, most of this stuff takes anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes max to rehydrate. So once you put it in your freezer bag, once you put your hot water in, if it's in a cozy, it's going to take 10 to uh, 20 minutes. Uh, like I said, you need anywhere between a, a cup and a half to two cups max. Uh, another thing is, is like they have the Idaho uh, potatoes or instant potatoes. I've realized that those are actually really good. And when you can put different things in like tuna fish, I don't have any out here. Uh, and the, the, the little packaging, uh, as well as some of these vegetables that you can carry around. Uh, it tastes really good. And I normally carry some Nydia uh, instant milk. So another way just to add more calories to your food is by pouring some of that in. And if it's kind of soupy or watery, uh, if you pour that in, it'll help make it so that it's a little bit thicker. So anyway, if you have any kind of questions or concerns, uh, please feel free to comment below. Uh, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. This is Sean Ryu.